staying with football on the Sportsmax zone. The second round of fixtures in the ever-competitive CONMEBOL World Cup qualifiers concluded on Tuesday. Let's look at the details. Okay, so we had Argentina overcoming Bolivia 3-0, a 2-1 win for Ecuador versus Uruguay. No goals in that match between Chile and Colombia. Brazil 1-0 win over Peru and one goal for Venezuela to overcome Paraguay. How does the table look now? Brazil at the top of the table on six points. Argentina in second also on six points. Colombia, they've, played, they've had one win, one draw so far. Uh, no losses, a total of four points. Uruguay in fourth position on three points. Venezuela in fifth spot on three points. And then Paraguay, Peru and Chile all have one point each. And Euro Ecuador and Bolivia ninth and tenth. No points just yet. Well, we discussed Argentina's performance in Tuesday's show. Today, we zone in on Brazil's effort with our South American football correspondent, Juan G. Arango. Juan, Brazil didn't look too impressive to me. How did you see it? I agree with you. I, I, I don't see them. I, they weren't impressive, but it was to be expected as Lima has been a difficult place for them, as Peru have been a very difficult rival for them in the recent uh, years in, in World Cup qualifying play. All that being said, you go in and, and you see that Peru, in, towards the last few minutes of the match, they kind of fell asleep. They kind of felt satisfied with being able to get a point off of Brazil, but then all of a sudden Marquinhos comes in and steals the three from uh, the Bicolor. Again, it's, it's not just them not looking impressive. It's Brazil finding a way. It's individuals being able to step up in certain moments and get the moment of recognition or the play of distinction that ends up being the difference maker so far in this World Cup qualifying, Mariah. Yeah, and you speak about individuals, and it's fitting at this point that I mentioned Neymar, who we expected to be very sharp and i understand that he recently had an ankle uh, surgery you know that ankle injury so you know many may say we're being very harsh but from the quality that we expect from a player like neymar i felt as if he wasn't as sharp as um, the brazilians and the football loving public would like well keep in mind he hasn't played much since the month of march so that's another thing we have to be looking at when, when you look at the overall play of Neymar, you know what you're going to get with him. The national team games are the first games that he's had since the month of March. Remember, he hasn't played yet uh, over in the Saudi League. He hasn't played, obviously, ever since he left PSG. So th that, that does show a little bit. But with time and, and with a philosophy that many of the players are not only understanding, but now liking, that's very important because that ends up being a talking point for many in Brazil. Whether they want to keep Fernando Dini's a little bit longer or they end up not needing Carlo Ancelotti at one point or another. That'll be a topic of discussion in the next couple of months. We see a Brazil side that is starting to understand a different facet of play. Not only that, maybe you start seeing it as a return to the roots of what Brazil was circa Tele Santana, maybe a little bit more from a philosophical standpoint. Yeah, another player that I want to single out one is Richarlison. Uh, ending these few games without a goal, it appears as if he too is struggling. The one opportunity that he got was a missed chance. Uh, what did you make of, you know, his, your assessment of his performance? Uh, Richarlison is interesting because now, I mean, uh, it's not me saying it, it's him also saying it. So he, he needs to not only change uh, the form that he has, he also needs to change the mindset. He was talking, and there was just a couple of quotes that came out in the Brazilian press afterwards saying, hey, you know what, maybe I need to start looking at myself and seeing what I need to do as a professional, uh, especially after the season, a very tumultuous season he had in several instances where he was the focal point of several controversies, and sometimes even needlessly he ends up being the, the focal point, and he needs to get away from that. He said, look, I'm going to go look at a psychologist. I'm going to look to see if I can get a... a, a a mental coach to be able to help me out and make me a sharper player. So I guess maybe it's not just us and what we were observing. I guess like like you and everyone else uh, has also said, hey, you know, he doesn't look too sharp. He also sees that he's not too sharp. And I think that that's probably the best way to look things going forward. Yeah, Juan, I just have one quick question going back to Neymar mm -hmm. because he's 31 yeah. years old now and uh, there was an issue. Apparently he was infuriated with the referee um, going into the halftime break. Is there an issue you think about his maturity he's not a young player anymore and uh, he seems to be offset by by things that happen on the field sometimes that 
that would affect his game. And um, I'm, I'm not sure if that's down to maturity or what. I, I think it's more to frustration because, I mean, if, 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 look, whether you like him or not, whether you think that, that, he, that he wants the center of attention all the time or not, if there's one thing that you look throughout the years with Neymar is that he, as a player, has been one of the most foul players in European football. That, there, that's in, undeniable. Uh, I mean, his style of play, the way he plays, end up kind of lending themselves to be that. And maybe in the heat of the moment, you do lose that. I mean, it doesn't mean that you're mature enough. You end up kind of losing that, that aspect of it and, and trying to find in a round where in South American football, refereeing has been questioned and questioned severely, especially if you go look at the Uruguay-Ecuador match, you start to have a lot of aspects questioned about referees. And, and, and that's yet another one that, that players are looking at. In, in terms of Neymar, yeah, he always wants to be able to get that upper hand. He always has to look for that competitiveness. And he, alongside many of his former teammates at Barcelona, one in particular, has already learned that it's not just playing on the pitch. It's also playing outside of it and being able to control things and being able to say things that end up really getting influence going his way. Yeah, well, another big result was Marcelo Bielsa's says Uruguay falling to Ecuador to one Ecuador giving a debut to Kendry Pais, the youngest player ever. Juan, what did you make of his debut and Ecuador's win? That, there's a reason why Chelsea wanted him for all the right reasons. I mean, <laughs> uh, at, le at, least, at least if you look at him in the long term, if you look at him in the short term, I, I don't know how much of a, how much of a contributor he, he can be for, for Chelsea. But for the national team, yet another gem that comes through. The nucleus of Ecuador, instead of getting older, ends up getting younger. And, and you see players coming down the pike, and you start seeing players that have been left aside. Leo Campana, uh, who played at Wolves, now at Inter Miami, he didn't get called up. So it's interesting to see that dynamic as well as you see other players coming through. And, of course, a player that seems to not ever get old in Enter Valencia, one of the best moments of his career over Internacional in, in Porto Alegre, coming in and also be stepping up and, and playing well. I'm not saying scoring goals. He's creating chances and being there for his team. But obviously the star that ends up taking all the lights is Felix Torres with his double. Yeah, and, you know, many people describing that matchup as a tale of two halves, you know. Um, the team that started off good, of course, didn't finish good. Do, do you agree with that description? Yes. And, and I mean, uh, the thing that everyone's talking about is... What was called there towards the end when Facundo Torres basically gets n almost knocked out by, by the Ecuadorian goalkeeper and, and the referee calls a foul or something? He doesn't, and VAR even comes back and says, I mean, I mean look, at, look at the replay, Lance. Look at the replay, Mariah, of that play. And, and you're like, how did they come up with that conclusion? Yeah. And, and that's been the, the biggest talking point in, in, in Uruguay in particular. They're talking about what was the and, and Sampaio's been a referee that's been criticized quite often, not only in, in South American qualifiers, not only in Libertadores, but also in the Brasileiro as well, where he's made some very, very suspicious. And sometimes, it's cruel to say, but sometimes even in net calls from a refereeing standpoint. But that aside, Ecuador were the better team overall, and, and they carried that over from their very good performance against Argentina despite losing. Yeah, and Uruguay now, they have a tough schedule coming up. They have teams like Colombia and Brazil. Do you see them making it? I mean, look, in terms of the odds, they, they got much better. You know, when you have six teams out of 10 advancing, you have the seventh team going into a playoff. It's very difficult to say that Uruguay is not going to make the World Cup, especially after two rounds. They played relatively well. Uh, Marcelo Bielsa has been able to hone in a, a certain inkling of a philosophy. He, he even said, look, I haven't done anything. The players have been able to work very hard. They only had one practice going into the, the, the match against Chile. So, so let's just say, you know, let's just say things the way they are. So when it comes to that, and as, as time ends up, uh, having Marcelo Bielsa work with this nucleus of players, with this group of players, you'll end up seeing a team that's much better. And keep in mind, we're only more about a little less than what two, two and a half years away from the World Cup. But at the same time, we're also six, uh, actually like seven, eight months away from the Copa America. Yeah. Well, one as always, we enjoy your input on the show, and we'll be linking up with you again soon to discuss, of course, this football and any other football that we need to. And like I told you, if, if you think that Jamaica is bad, look at Paraguay. Yeah, will do. Paraguayan fans would love to have a Jamaican team right now. I, I, I can tell you that without a, without a hesitation or without stuttering.
Mm, thanks for that one. We'll chat again soon. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye bye. Juan Giarango, there, our football correspondent. Well, coming up on the show, at the track on the Sportsmax Zone, the St. Lucian apprentice Aaron Daniel aces the Ricky Griffiths Memorial Race in Barbados, plus the latest from Jamaica and a massive stakes win for Barbadian trainer Safi Joseph Jr. at Kentucky Downs. On At The Track, a presentation Thursday, you won't want to miss.